and welcome back for another Cottage Cuts YouTube tutorial and giveaway. This is Marla with Mad About Cards and Crafts and today I have this delightful celebration card that can be used for any occasion. I'll be using the Spring Gnome Cottage. Here's a look at that die set. It is part of the spring release available in the Scrap and Cottage. There are several different elements that could be used separately or together. There's a little mushroom house, some flowers, and then and of course the adorable gnome. I'm going to start with some Copic coloring, just one item. I wanted to show how I colored up this beard. You'll notice that I'm doing a flicking motion. I have a C5 marker and I'm not going all the way to the center. So I started with that darkest color and I'm blending it in with a C3 still leaving that center bare. I'm going to come up a little bit higher with the C1 and then I'll blend everything out with the C0. There's still a little bit too much disparity with that dark color and the next color to it so I'm going to add in a little C4 and then I'm going to do the same thing. C3 I'll blend in the C1 and that's going to blend all of my colors together and then finally I'll finish off with my C0. So just as easy as that, that's how I colored up the beard. There is an embossed mouth on this die piece. So I am using my C3 Copic marker just to accentuate that mouth and make sure that you can see it. Once I get that completed, we are going to start putting our gnome together. Now I'm going to start with the hat and then I'm going to realize that the, no that the little nose needs to go uh, underneath the hat. So I'm going to have to remove that hat, add the nose, and then I'll add the hat again. This came together really quick and easy. I colored the rest of this gnome and the house and flowers with the Copic markers. I did use Copic um, Express It paper to color up my images. I'm going to add his little dress. Is it a dress or a shirt? You tell me. Do no What do gnomes wear? Because they very rarely wear pants as far as I can see. So I'm going to add his face to the body. I'm going to put his hands on and I'm going to use my reverse tweezers because I'm barely holding these on. Just a little edge of that hand is slipping underneath the cuff of the shirt dress. And I'm going to use those reverse tweezers just to hold it in place for a few minutes and make sure that everything dries well. I've colored up the shoes. This one shoe on the left, I am going to off camera move it. I have it a little bit too far to the right and I want it a little bit further out once I look at that gnome. So I will add it a little bit further out to the right off camera and you'll see that in the finished photo, but I'm going to set this aside to dry and then I put the rest of my cottage together off camera. I have a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch accent opaque paper. I'm going to do some um, ink blending. I'm going to create a coordinating background. So I went through my inks and I found ink colors that went really well with the Copic colors that I used on my gnome. And here's a trick if you don't have a stripe stencil. I'm using the grid on my mat to line up all of my washi tape and this is going to help me get straight fairly even lines. Now I am going to mention that you could have started this in the middle and maybe your end pieces would match up just a little bit better than mine did. When I, I'm going to end up cutting this down with a die and when I do that um, it does help with that pink tone on the two ends. It helps even it out just a little bit better, but I didn't get it uh, perfectly even. So I'm starting with some Catherine Pooler inks. As I said, I tried to match up what I had with the Copic markers, and these inks did match beautifully. I started with Party Dress, which was the pink. In between colors, I am using a baby wipe. You can see it in the upper right-hand corner to wipe off the washi tape so I don't contaminate my colors. I used tiara for the yellow and I used uh, aquatini for the teal, flirty fuchsia for the purple, 
and now I'm showing you the reveal and you can see just how one beautiful these colors really are and two how quick and easy that was to create that background I did want to mention that you can just clean off the washi tape and reuse it so that tape isn't wasted here's that die I was talking about I'm going to cut out a rectangle just to make it an eighth of an inch smaller than this four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding card base. I'm going to glue my stenciled panel to that and then we're going to work on our frame. I took some of the same rectangle dies, some that were just a little bit smaller, and I'm adding the ink around the edges and I'm going to glue this as best I can to the center of this card. Let me tell you, because there were stripes on this, it was really hard for me to line this up. I might not have gotten it completely even top to bottom. If I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't notice, but um, it really was, it really was um, hard to see with those stripes. So this is the centerpiece that came out. I didn't ink blend on this, obviously. And I'm going to add it to the center, and we're going to add our sentiment. One of my tricks to adding a sentiment and making sure you have it straight is to first stamp it on a piece of acetate. I'm using the Blue Suede Shoes. Uh, I think that's what the name of it is. Blue suede, or something borrowed, sorry, the something borrowed ink, and I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And once I get my sentiment stamped, I'm going to add a little of that flirty fuchsia to the background. I wanted to add a little bit more purple to this composition because I felt like some of the purple was missing. I was really dominant with the blues, the teals, and the pinks, but I wanted to add a little bit more of that purple, so I just added a little wash with what was left on my brush on the background. I'm going to glue this onto this panel and I'm going to take a couple of times to get it straight because getting things straight is not my strong suit. So I'm going to pull it up one more time and I'll straighten it out. You'll notice as I mentioned I did put the house together. I did add a couple of the flowers and now we're going to start putting together the other elements that go along with this. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it is a giveaway, so all you need to do to enter is make sure that you leave a comment, make sure that you're a subscriber, and like this video. The winner from the last video, my last video, I did share the Easter cross with flowers. That winner is Mary Schwer. I hope I pronounced your name right. Mary, your name is up on the screen. I'll have Mary Marsh's information linked in the description box below. Send her an email and she will be happy to send you out your die. If you enter with a comment, a subscription, and a like for this video, you will have a chance to win this Spring Gnome Cottage, so good luck to you. As I mentioned, I'm adding the rest of my foliage around the sides of this house, and once I finish with that, that will finish off my card for today. So I hope you'll give this background technique a try. You certainly can do this at the diagonal. You can also do vertical stripes. So just play around with this technique. It's really fun and it's a great way to coordinate with your cottage cut dies. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for joining me today.